In this video I'm going to talk about my ongoing journey into motorbiking and I've just finished, uh, well I say just, today I finished and passed my motorcycle theory test so I thought I'd talk to you about what my experience was and my recommendations if you're looking to do the same. Okay, so at 8am this morning, I went and did my motorcycle theory test here in the UK. It's really handy that they have an early slot, um, so I can obviously get these things done before work. And what happened basically is you have uh, an hour to do the test. I took uh, about 40, 42 minutes or something like that. I was back home by nine o'clock, which was fantastic uh, in terms of getting ready for work. Now. The theory test has been around for a while now. I think it must be like over 20 odd years since the theory test was introduced. And some of you may have done the theory test if you have um, a car license, because um, I know I think it's 1996, wasn't it? I think they introduced that. But the motorcycle test is slightly different. So lots of similarities, but some slight, slight differences. And obviously the highway code plays uh, a major part. So I was relatively confident going in, or well, at least booking my uh, theory test. £23 is what it costs right now at the time of doing this video. And it's basically broken up into two sections. You have a uh, multiple choice uh, theory part, which is obviously questions about the highway code, bre braking differences and signaling and manoeuvring and kind of safety or that kind of thing. And then the second part is a hazard awareness section where they play I think it's 15 one minute videos and you basically have to click when you see a hazard uh, occurring so that's actually for me the hardest part which I'll talk about um, in a moment so in terms of kind of preparation for the test initially I wasn't actually wasn't doing too much because I thought well I've been driving a long time my highway code knowledge is not perfect but it's pretty good and with obviously lots of years uh, of driving experience a lot of the things i thought would be uh, pretty obvious so i went um, online to the official government website and did a couple of their theory test questions and was getting most of them right most of the time enough to pass anyway then um some of the things I wasn't, braking distance was always one of the ones that I wasn't too sure about. And also that changes a little bit um, with the motorbike stuff. So I decided I'd kind of have a look on online for some apps. So there is an app um, that I purchased and I'll put a information about what that is down below. And I really recommend you do it. I think it cost me like two pounds or 2 99 something like that. Uh, but the most important thing on top of that was another £1.99 for some hazard perception video training, which I definitely, 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 definitely recommend that you do. So the um, the training on the app is very, very comprehensive, massive sections and mock tests that you can go through to kind of build your confidence um, you know, with the highway code and all the, the questions you're going to get. But the thing that was hardest for me was the hazard awareness or perception test. Now, the reason for that is, and this is my excuse for that is, that because I've been driving for so long and I've seen so many things on the road, I have, I feel at least I have a, a quite a good judgment of when some Muppet's about to do something on the road and so I can kind of slow down and react accordingly. Now, one of the problems with that is I was finding when I started to do this testing that I was actually spotting the issue too early and I think what the system is doing is then saying no you're um, you're being over cautious now obviously I can kind of understand in some ways why that's important because if you're a completely new driver with no kind of road experience you don't want someone who's driving or riding along completely worried about everything and you know, not making good progress but I found constantly with these tests that you know, I was seeing the fact that there was a car slightly moving on the drive, so there's a good chance it was going to pull straight onto the road. Then it did pull out onto the road, and I'd already clicked. I thought that was going to happen, and I basically clicked too soon. So um, I'll 
hopefully do a little video overlay so you can see an example of this. Um, so I really recommend that you, you try this out. And the thing that's most important is when you do uh, the actual test itself, you don't get penalized for clicking too much. Well, if you if you keep on clicking all the time, basically just you know, click, 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 you will get zero points. Basically, to use that example I gave, if you see a car in a driveway it's starting to reverse, you can click because you think, oh, some badness could happen. Then we actually see it coming out into the road without stopping, then click again. So one of the initial things I had when I was doing my kind of practice was I was clicking once and then not clicking again. And because I was and clicking too early, I would get zero points for it. So don't be scared to click too much. Um, I definitely recommend you kind of try out the app that I've um, kind of suggest to you. And obviously wish you best of luck if you're doing your motorcycle theory test. So that's kind of where I am. So I've CBT done and passed. I've bought the Mutt Motorcycle Fat Sabbath 125, which I've been riding around now. I think I'm nearly up to 300 miles, getting much more um, confident with it, trying to get more training booked. But I'm also doing my own training in the car parts and stuff. I found this really good YouTube channel called Moto Jitsu. Um, got really good information on kind of th different things you can practice and U-turns and emergency brake and all different stuff that seems quite obvious, but some good examples of kind of the processes and things that you should go through with that. So I recommend checking that out as well. Uh, and so my plan is um, need to get a motorbike um, to its first service soon, which should be due at 500 miles, not too far away. And continue to get that road experience, do some of the practice on my own. And then once some of the booking availability comes up, uh, I can do um, some more training for then to my Mod 1 and my Mod 2. Again, not trying to get that done by the end of the year. If that's what happens, because timing and availability means it's possible and I feel confident in it, then I will. Uh, but really, my plan is, you know, hopefully by this time next um, August I will have completed my Mod 1 and Mod 2 and then would be eligible for a larger bike if I want. Um, but I'm really enjoying that uh, the 125 experience so far. Let me know in the comments if you've done your motorcycle theory test and if you've kind of had some of the same experiences and thoughts as me. Um, let me know if you like the app and it, and it helps you and you pass. But uh, yeah, that's it. So best of luck um, on your theory test. I now have two years until I have to do that again, so that's why it's important that I've got yeah, the CBT and the theory has a two-year expiration date. So now's the time to get your practice in and your Mod 1 and Mod 2 done so you can do away with these tests um, and not have to worry about how to reset them when the two years expires. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.